No, not during construction. No, no. Everything's coming from Mount Carmel Road up through the road that we built. Nothing. There'll be no access whatsoever by anything except an emergency vehicle in time of an emergency. Okay. Now, Tim Kula already has one institution on it. Right next to me. I personally, I don't want another one. You're on Timakula. The institution is on off of Mount Carmel Road. No, no. I'm saying yeah. the institution. There's a group home. It's an institution right next to my house. And I can tell you that the people that go to that institution are dumping garbage. They are speeding. I too almost got hit probably a week ago because somebody was coming down that very narrow road mm -hmm. and was on their cell phone or something, and I had to swerve. Now, knowing how narrow <coughs> that road is, I almost went over into the pitch. So, I mean, those are my concerns. Well, we've been here for 36 years, <laughs> and we haven't really had any problems that I know of. Um, we've been pretty quiet. See, I don't know anything about your institution, and I guess that's one thing that concerns me, that I don't know. What is it? Well, it's, you can, we can give you some information yeah, if you like. Yeah, I would like that. We could provide you with something. Sure. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. You could do yeah. that. That's not a problem. Okay. Yeah. This is Scott. Do you have any questions for this witness? Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Kenty, when you started speaking, uh, you addressed the planned community as a retirement nonprofit. And then, have you cleared that up, that it's, it's got to be mixed use? I think if you played the tape back, you would find that I say there's a lot of us who are at retirement age who are going to live there. It's not a retirement community. There's young children there, there's young families there. It's mixed. It's all ages. But many of us now are old and gray, and we're going to be living there and building our houses. So it's not a, not a retirement community. It's we are retiring there. In reading uh, documents in the township office regarding previous hearings, uh, Someone, I don't know whether it was you, did state that um, because a question was made by Supervisor Makeley in reference to uh, children and the comment made by your organization said that children will be homeschooled and there would be a possibility of building a school. 
<laughs> that is in the record here in the township. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know anything about that. And it, There'll be no school. There's no intention of school. And it mentioned that it would be an age-restricted community. No. The, these are uh, hearings no. that Bawa had with East Fowl Field supervisors. Um, and at that time, there were 100 graves. Now you say there's 180, 150. 140 or 50. And how, how much acreage is allotted for your <coughs> cemetery? And is that spelled out in yes, the it's settlement? On the it's on the plan, yes. yes. OK. I believe you testified before it's currently half acre. You're intending to allot five acres? About five acres. Now, and then this institutional uh, development will be exclusively only to your membership? At the present time, it is. It's people who are in the fellowship who have uh, donated money to do this project. Yes. In the future, so it's in the future, if they pass away and they sell their house, any of you could buy the house. There's no restriction. But at this time, in building of your 23 lots, it's exclusive to your membership. Yes, it is. And your membership, uh, what capacity, what authority, what is your title with that membership? I am the project manager of this project. And I am just a member of the fellowship. I have no title. I'm just an ordinary member. Okay. In reading hearings <clears throat> of BAWA and East BAWA, the Board of Supervisors, it mentioned that your organization has <coughs> three presidents and three secretaries. And uh, at one time, yeah. then it was reduced down to two presidents and two secretaries. Possibly, yeah. I don't. I, I'm out in the country. The main fellowship is in Philadelphia, and I don't really um, know how many presidents are. I think there are two presidents. One <laughs> is behind you. Okay. Uh, I'll just see. Uh, and, uh, and just for clarification and for the record, I believe you stated that the Brandywine Conservancy and Chester <laughs> County Planning Commission created the vehicle for you to proceed with your plan? They created the planned institutional community. Yes. Okay. And, uh, the Mr. Zoning aspect of it. Okay, <coughs> thank you. And, um, another question I had. Uh, does your organization own any other? land in East Fallowfield? No. Uh, do you personally own any other land in East Fallowfield? <clears throat> yeah. So, um, the Ginty name that I had heard, I didn't follow up with uh, Tax <clears throat> Assessor's Office of Chester County, uh, there was a Ginty that either owns or manages the former Collier Farm on South Park Avenue. That is not you? I don't own that, but I do take care of it for people who own it in, in Wisconsin. Okay, so you are the person who manage it. manages it. Okay. So, <coughs> evidently the owner, the buyer, is... I'm going to use that for uh, an investment and for future. That's, you know, when I seen your name, Ginty, and then I knew you were associated with that property, it concerned me that uh, the Bawa Fellowship could uh, also do an additional uh, plan just. Institutional community. No, the institutional community was removed from the zoning, and that land is 10-acre minimum. 
one house per tenant for Lamar property? No. Plus Lamar property. Oh, Lamar, you call that the Lamar yeah. property? Okay. Okay, but then as I heard from a resident on Timical Road, <coughs> he was a supervisor, he thought the area that the Bawa Fellowship in was, is in and progressing used to be 20 acres. So, a requirement. Yeah, with, with all due respect, the, the application before this Board of Supervisors tonight is this 108 acres in the name of this particular applicant. I really don't know how the others may be relevant to this application. I I also would suggest uh, for the board of supervisors in the township office is a map. I know this is the applicant's map. But East Fallowfields, who Mr. Howe prepared it. Uh, I don't know whether he's going to speak, but if that would be the case, Mr. Howe's map better portrays the applicant's plan for the general public's understanding rather than this photograph. So I would ask that that be placed so that the present people can look at that. It's more clearly defined. Uh, did you also state that there's a huge parking lot next to the huge um, uh, house of worship rectory, as you call it? The uh, East Fallow Field regulations have determined how many parking spaces we need. That wasn't our determination. We'd rather have far fewer, but they said we had to have a certain amount. But it looked like to me like it would suit close to 200 cars. No, 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 no. They, we have an engineer here uh, who will talk to that point when he <coughs> gets up here. All righty. Uh, and then in front and near each of the 23 residents, Two car parking, yes. or okay, and uh, also I noticed on there were on the township <coughs> document uh, maps it uh, indicated there were sewage disposal fields. What are they, and where will they be placed? Sewage disposal the, the, fields. The stormwater basins is not. Well, the wording um, was sewage disposal fields. Yeah, why don't we'll you defer to Dave? We'll let the engineer speak about that. Okay. That's technical. Yeah. All righty. Uh, now it's on site water. Each You will drill wells for each of the 23 houses. Each of them. Or will there be a community well? No, there's not a community well. Each, each house will have the same well. And also, the rectory will have a well. There's already two wells existing, pre-existing. And each of the 23 residents will have their own sewage yes. disposal. Yeah, just, just to head you off at the past, perhaps, uh, we've already got our testing completed and the septic system's approved. Each lot has two has, has a, a, a primary and a secondary system that has been approved. It's done. And the wells have been located on the property also, <coughs> reflecting the, the, uh, uh, the guidelines of the church uh, Now, your is your name, are you the applicant named on the Conditional use application. No, that's the Roma Hygiene Fellowship. That name is on there. Care of you or? Well, care of the president, the, uh, the board of trustees, <coughs> and myself as someone who lives in the area. Because that would be a question. <coughs> the institution, the nucleus, or the institution is Philadelphia based. 
um, and I notice on the tax parcel, uh, it, it has the VAWA Fellowship of 5820 over Brook Avenue, Philadelphia, PA. However, the mailing goes to Emanuel Levin of Atlantic City. Now, oh, okay. And, okay, so Mr. Levin, Esquire, lawyer, is also a member. He's a president. He is the president. And as I also read at other hearings uh, that the township conducted, uh, the the fellowship began in 1971, and. And you began the process in 2000? No, we purchased the land in 1980. Okay. All right. <coughs> uh, has there... And, and you are the builder and the project manager? I'm the project manager. Okay. Well, that, I don't know what I would ask. Who, who, who paid and how much was the application fee paid? Because usually that's an exhibit, and I didn't hear that mentioned, uh, that the exhibit would contain proof that a fee was paid for the conditional use. It was. That's, I'll let the lawyer answer that. Ma'am, I, I believe it was, but the application is being made pursuant to a court order that approved the 2012 settlement stipulation. All well and good. I would just like it to be made a copy of that and it being made an exhibit. A copy of proof of payment for the conditional use hearing, of which we've had many. And the application itself is marked as Exhibit T2. That was back in 2000. I'll defer to whatever records there are to uh, establish payment or not payment. Well, I feel as a resident, taxpaying resident of the township, I would want to be assured that the application fee was paid. So I wish to have that definitely supplied, proof of payment. And so before you can proceed legally with anything, you have to have proof of payment. Well, at this point I'm going to have to interject and say that it is the applicant's case. We are submitting our case to you, the Board of Supervisors. We have the burden to go forward. We have the burden to introduce testimony in support of the application. It's not for a party to demand certain things at this point. So I submit to you, with all due respect, that we proceed with this application, let the testimony come in, and at the conclusion, if a party wants to make a certain request or introduce their own testimony, they can do so at that time. This is the portion of the hearing where questions are asked of our witnesses. I ask with all due respect that we adhere to that. Mrs. Scott, do you have any further questions for Mr. Uh, Thank you. Just to clarify the one point, because you, you did ask about the, um, the depiction of Exhibit A, I can read it, A3. Um, the, the full binder of exhibits that the applicant has submitted is going to be available for review at the Township Building, although I think we've made the request to the applicant to provide anyone who hasn't received those exhibits um, a copy of them before the next hearing. 